We are beginning week two of the Mauna Loa eruption with lava continuing to flow from Fisher 3. Now the rate has slowed, but experts say it's hard to predict what will happen this week. And joining us now with more is USGS geologist Frank Truesdale. Frank, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Now, anything new overnight that happened? For example, a new fissure? Uh, no, there has been no fissure. Fissure 3 continues to be the primary source of the lava feeding the flows. And what's the rate like now? Uh, the rate has been pretty much the same as it's been since the beginning of the eruption. There's been no change in the output of the amount of lava that's happening or being produced. Can you explain all the variables at play that make it difficult to predict when or if the flow will reach Saddle Road? Yeah, first of all, the variables are how much lava is being produced, but once it gets down slow, the things that can affect where the flow is going to go primarily is the topography. And then the fact that we have open channel system means that as the lava is coursing its way down to the saddle, we lose gas. We're also losing temperature, and that actually makes the lava more pasty or viscous. And then once it gets down into the saddle area where the slopes are very gentle, and then the flows start to spread out, and the topography within pre-existing topography, for example, older flows that are down there in the saddle road, if they're more than a few meters high, can act as lava diversion structures and change the course or the pathway of the flows. But as it stands right now, what are we looking at? When could it hit the highway? Well, because of all those variables I just talked to you about, it's very difficult for us to forecast when the flows are going to actually arrive at the saddle road. The advance rate for the last 24 hours, well, the last information we have was about 40 feet a day. The saddle road is about 2.3 miles away. And we still have lots to go. Because the topography is so gentle, we anticipate the flows to actually slow down instead of advance at the consistent rate that I just reported. Now, Frank, the USGS lowered the aviation code from red to orange. Can you explain what that means and the reason for this decision? Okay, so the aviation code primarily has to do with particulates or ash that's sent into the air because of the eruption. And initially, the amount of lava, well, there were multiple fissures that had opened up and all of them were a source of particulates that could affect aircraft and and primarily air, aircraft is what we're worried about. But now that it's a singular vent and the amount of lava coming out, I mean, the gases coming out is a very consistent source. Now it's easier to forecast for aircraft where those plumes are going to be. And thus it's not as, big of a hazard as it was, and therefore the decrease in the aviation code. All right, Frank Truesdale, geologist with USGS, we thank you so much for joining us on this Monday morning.